little bit of growth. I think um, we're going to keep learning from it because this is a game where you got to take into account um, PJ went down, when you was fouled out, how many was in um, foul trouble most of the game. So it's going to be competitive and rough. We're going to have to do it again. So we can't take this one for granted. What's it been like trying to watch Fulgerson, you know, work back from this, this injury at this first stretch of the season? Um, it's, it's huge. I'm uh, roommates with John. He's one of my closest friends. And just seeing how competitive he wants to be and how much he missed the game after 10 months, you just want him the best for him. So the fact that he's finding his niche again and getting back into it is really huge. Um, I know in the first half, Kentucky had six steals, four blocks. Do you think, like, their length bothers you early and you adjust it? I know they didn't have a steal or a block in the second they, they are a very huge team. Them, you look at Georgia, you look at Texas A&M, um, those are really huge teams in the league. And they utilize their length well, and they get their hands on a lot of um, shots, and they also get their hands on passing lanes. Uh, I don't know if I pronounce it, I think it's Shea, but I'm shy, Gilgis Alexander. He, um, he does a phenomenal job just getting the passing lanes and just getting those steals. So you have to take into account their length. Grant, just talk about the difference between the first half and the second half for you tonight. I think the first half I was being a little bit more passive and also I was letting, um, I think I think I let PJ in my head a little bit in the, in the first half. When he blocked my shot on the fadeaway, usually I knocked that down and I felt like it was going to be good when it left my hand, but he got his hand on it. So um, he did a good job in the first half. Him going down with cramps really hurt them, I think. I think their team deflated a little bit, but um, I don't take that into account mostly because um, we're just going to compete the entire game. And just because something happens in the first half doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen in the second. Did your approach change much when you guys don't tip off till 9 o'clock? It's going to be kind of weird. It's difficult. 9 o'clock tips so late, and you don't get out of game until probably 11, 12 o'clock, depending on how long the game goes. And, um, you just have to be mentally prepared. It's all about mental toughness because if you go in, you're like, oh, it's so late. Why are we playing this late? You're not going to do well that game. Grant, I'm sorry if you already passed this, but you had 16 points in the second half. You know, they were kind of quiet in the first half, but it wasn't just a matter of keeping your head down to keep taking shots you know you can make. Yeah. Um, I knew I could make those shots. PJ was doing a good job defending me, whether it was contesting my fade away or just not letting me get deep post position. So um, to see to see each other play again and rough, I think it's going to be even, uh, even more competitive. So it's going to be a fun time. Can you tell Kentucky's that young? Uh, Coach said they might be the youngest team in the country. Is that? Can you tell that they're lacking some veteran savvy, or are they just young and athletic? I think they are hiding it. I think they're doing a good job hiding it because they're playing. They're competing. Um, they're top, I don't know, top 15 team in the country, and they are fighting. They don't, you know, look, they don't look young to me. They don't act like young. PJ acts like a veteran. Um, Winion has been there since last year, and they did really well last year, so he's a voice on their team. Hami was there last year, if you think about it, because he graduated early and was on the team. So I don't see their youth factor in, just like us last year. When you play so long and you play with those guys, you're just going to compete.